In this episode of Investors and Operators, I am chatting with Bob Green, the president and CEO of the NAIC. Bob, it has been a long time coming. I'm glad that we could finally hop on and do this. But before we dive into your story and kind of why you uh, do the work you do with NAIC, I'd love to just kind of get the overview of NAIC for the, for the audience. Sure. Thanks, Jordan. And I appreciate you uh, having me on today. So NAIC is a 51-year-old organization, and we are the trade association for diverse-owned private equity firms and hedge funds. Uh, we uh, got our start uh, under a much different name, but a similar mission. Our, we were initially chartered in 1971 as the American Association of Mesbics. And Mesbics were uh, SBICs that were focused on minority investing. And over time, as more and more people of color began to move away from the SBIC program to true independent private equity firms, um, we, uh, we changed the name or they changed the name. I, I wasn't around then, but they changed the name. And we've operated since then, probably for the last 30 years, focused as uh, a trade association of PE firms. What are some of the f- interesting facts and figures on you know, how you think about measuring impact? Uh, in your community? Yeah, no, great question. I think if you look at, uh, I'm going to take you back further than perhaps you would think, but I think if you look at America's economic system, capitalism, uh, for too long, people of color and women have been some form of capital, right? Um, But we haven't had capital to invest that would give us full participation in the economy. And I think at the end of the day, the work that the NAIC members do is aspiring to live out the fullness of the American dream, which is to accumulate capital, invest capital, nurture it, and then harvest it. And uh, so it's a very pure, straightforward mission. Uh, and I think that it's been uh, an extraordinarily worthwhile endeavor because, you know, we, we are all familiar with the statistics around the wealth gap between communities of color and majority community. But how do you close that wealth gap? You're not going to you're not going to earn your way out of it from a wages standpoint. You're not going to play enough sports or sing enough songs or win enough lotteries to get out of it. You're, you're going to have to uh, transact commerce and get deals done and build build companies and have those companies become a vibrant economy and, and ultimately, you know, liquidate. So uh, that's what NAIC members do. And I, I couldn't be more proud of the members in their quest to uh, to execute their strategies and create wealth. I think over the past two years, there's been a lot of positive momentum in bringing the discussion for people of color, women, just a broader discussion in the finance community. I think that's a big win for the broader finance community. But one of the kind of questions that has really stuck with me is how do you define success in, for example, just the uh, private equity community out of the, call it 5,000 firms, what does success look like? Does it mean, I think we just did a study that I think was it 10 to 15% of SBICs have a women in the GP and like only four, not 4%, like four have veterans in the GP. Sure. So like, what does success look like five years from now? Is it even a reasonable thing to have a hard number? Yeah. Um, well, first, first of all, let me, let me go back and, and just sort of unpack what you said. I, I would agree with you. There has been an absolute multifold increase in the dialogue around diversity, equity, and inclusion. I don't think we even called it DEI uh, for very long before the dialogue increased two years ago. It was diversity and it was inclusion, but, uh, but rarely all three. Um, what, what hasn't happened, Jordan, is the full materialization of the promises. So as you know, two years ago, a lot of companies made promises and raised their hands in a self-acknowledgement that we're going to do better, right? Economic pronouncements were made. The unfortunate part is that that rhetoric, uh, a lot of it has been empty rhetoric. So the actual flow of capital hasn't matched the flow of support verbally. So we one have to we, we one have to walk in truth and the light around that and make sure that those promises are fulfilled because it is unreasonable to expect a community to perform with less capital, 
right? With fewer deal opportunities, with, you know, fewer um, firms that support the entrepreneurs. So I would say the true, the best answer I can give to your question is it's measured in dollars, dollars in the community and dollars that flow um, out of the community in terms of deals done. So when a, a greater portion of diverse entrepreneurs are able to effectively raise capital, I would say we've had success. When more people look at those entrepreneurs and realize that they too can raise capital and create a successful company, we've had success. When more people of color can raise venture capital, growth equity, and whatever their imagination allows, I would say we've had success. And ultimately, when our communities are all more vibrant because the economics and wealth creation has touched all of the people, at least all of the people that are willing to take the risk, then I would say we, we have success. But we have a long way to go. And the good news is, is that there's a generation of people behind my generation that are very focused on entrepreneurship and very focused on uh, pursuing their economic dreams. Yeah, it's one of those difficult questions because we have the feeling that first the discussion is front and center, but yeah. then we have to, what does it actually mean? Does it mean like out of, you know, 10 people on the investment committee or five people, do we, do we have quotas? Like, I think it's in, what is it, Greenland or, or um, one of the Nordic countries where they literally have a board requirement for females on the board. Um, and there's that delicate balance. And I think it's about, you know, just keeping this front and center, but let's maybe kind of last question is what are practical steps that investment managers can take right now to have something that is actionable that they need to be talking about at their, uh, at, at, you know, at their firms on where are we at, where do we need to go? Like, what are some practical steps for this? Yeah, I think the first thing is to return to business logic. Um, we have vilified words like quota and target and goal when it comes to talking about DEI. And we don't do that in any other area of business. I mean, we all learn in business that which we can measure, we can manage, and that which we manage, we can achieve. But we don't do that in diversity. It, diversity seems to be one of the only places where it is acceptable to start the conversation with, I can't find any. I've tried and I wasn't successful. Can you imagine if we said that about other categories? I've tried to build technology and I can't. Well, you're not in the business, right? I've tried to raise capital, but I can't. So I think we need to push through uh, our own sort of economic and political uh, and social limitations around what trying means and is trying enough. Uh, I think trying is not enough. I think success has to, we all have to be held accountable for success. So um, I, I think one of the practical steps is to not accept no for an answer and not accept can't as a solution. I think beyond that is to understand that um, we truly have been endowed with talented people in every single community. There's not one community and not one geographic breakdown, not one um, region of the country that doesn't have talented people. What's not equal is opportunity, right? And so the if we wanna focus on democratizing anything, let's democratize opportunity. Let's democratize access to capital. Let's democratize access to contracts, access to markets. And once I think you do that, you'll begin to see that when affluence is achieved in all community, people can perform better. Each successive generation can get better. We've been stuck in a conversation for 150 years about access, right? I mean, give me a break. I mean, at what point are we going to get over an access conversation and get to a real performance conversation? So that's what I'm hopeful for. I'm actually optimistic about it. And uh, I believe that those two or three practical steps uh, would drive much further uh, up the growth curve for our goals. I absolutely love that. And it is the first time I've really heard it framed in those terms. In one sense, you have the politicization quota, but what's another word for a quota? A metric. And to your point, you're going to operate your business with metrics. Investors are going to expect their portfolio companies to hit metrics. So why not apply a similar framework to how we are thinking about DE and I? Absolutely. Bob, I am really glad that we had this conversation and I look forward to a second one. Thank you, Jordan. I appreciate it.